WhatsApp guys, probably you are overwhelmed with all the things and videos and mathematics we've seen. But I got this visual summary which I got from this book. So if you want to check it, check it out. It's in chapter 3 of Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering by Scott Fowler, 4th edition. So once again, let me explain you guys. We got this, let's say, equation. Now we could either have liquid phase or gas phase. Depending on the phase, we could also have flow reactors such as the CSTR, the PFR, and the PBR, or we could have batch reactors. Okay, remember that for flow reactors, you will have concentrations in terms of flows and volumetric flow rate, and for batch, you will have moles and volume. So just be sure to have this difference, flows and volumetric flow rate versus volume. So depending on what type of reactor you have, let's say you have a flow reactor and there is no phase change, we could and we will say that if we have a constant volumetric flow rate, so if we don't change that volumetric flow rate, or if our initial volume is the same as our final volume, if they are the same, we can model it by doing these equations. So the cool thing here is that in liquid phase, you don't care if it's a flow or a batch reactor, you can apply these equations. But just be sure that you are in liquid phase, guys. Because if you're in gas phase, you cannot use that. Okay, let's let's do the gas phase exercise. You could either have batch reactors or flow reactors. If you have batch reactors, you can have this definition and this definition, which is exactly the same I just told you. One special case which applies to batch and flow reactors is that when you have constant volume or constant volumetric flow rates and no change in moles and no change in pressure and no change in temperature you could actually use these equations you have gas phase but if you have at least one mole that change or you got a little bit pressure drop or you got a temperature change you cannot apply that and actually a change in moles is very very common and we're going to see that uh, essentially, for example, A turns out to form 2B, you are changing 1 mole to 2 moles, so you cannot use these equations. Now, actually I think I have, let me go, yeah, we can zoom this. The same diagram, I just cut it, I wanted to show it you a little bit better. Uh, we got the batch and the flow reactors, and this is for volumes and this is for volumetric flow rates nice then CB here here we refer to moles of P and we are using look how I added pressure and temperature pressure and temperature and here I never added pressure nor temperature why because we have no gases gases need to be modeled with pressure and temperature changes and look how I forced to have a concentration here and a concentration right here. And you still do some math mathematic approaches. Remember, epsilon is this value and this small delta is this value. And remember that you can calculate the pressure, uh, the concentration at any moment by this equation right here. And yeah, you start doing all the mathematics we did. And if it's a thermal and if you have no pressure drop, you get this equation and you can use this equation always Look this one and this one and what I want you to actually see that the only difference is this guys volume equals initial volume times 1 plus epsilon x so if you remember this from previous videos you will see that the only thing that changes is that volume thing because this part right here is exactly the same part as this here. So the only change is this. And yeah, I, I know it's it looks so fancy and a lot of mathematics and variables and changes. But at the end, what I want you to tell you is that if it's liquid, use this equation. If it's a gas that has change in moles, use the whole equation. So my recommendation, learn this, memorize it by heart 
and know when to use it for uh, constant volumes or constant volumetric flow rates and you will be happy you don't need to do all this logic I have this and then uh, is it liquid or is it gas phase and is it flow rate or is it patch or you don't know blah 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 go directly to this you know for example if you have no tension volumes take away that this is one and you're set to do the exercise hopefully that helps you to visualize everything and you want to know all the equations you have them here I don't think they are useful because actually there's a lot of variables I will get more confused I prefer to take my equations but if you think it's helpful for you don't worry you're happy to use them because they actually work so that was everything for the summary I told you we're going to practice some exercises and we're set with this chapter we can continue to chapter 4 which is the actual design of isothermal reactors what's up guys it's me chemical engineering guy so if you like the video why not push the like button it really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.